Good morning. My name is Caroline, and I'm a junior, and I go to Plano East Senior High School. How can we comfort people? Comfort is a hard package to unfold, and it is sometimes hard to find comfort. We have to learn to be comfortable in the uncomfortable. We have to find who or what we are going to look to in times of trouble. Comfort is sometimes like a blanket. It wraps us up and keeps us warm, but during uncomfortable times, what if we lose our blanket? We are like a baby crying for help. We sometimes have to find different ways to find comfort instead of being stationary in what we are so used to. In the book of 2 Corinthians, in the first chapter, hear these words. May, God, the, God, may the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ be blessed. He is the compassionate Father of God of, and God of all comfort. He is the one who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort other people who are in every kind of trouble. We offer the same comfort that we ourselves received from God. That is because we receive so much comfort through Christ in the same way that we share so many of Christ's sufferings. So if we have trouble, it is to bring you comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is to bring you comfort from the experience and endurance while you go through the same sufferings that we also suffer. Our hope for you is certain because we know that as you are partners in sufferings, so you are also partners in comfort. The title of this passage is called God's Comfort in Trouble. We are all human, so we are all bound to be in, in trouble at some time or another. Was our first thought to get, look to God? Maybe it was, but sometimes it's not. And that's okay, because God was probably waiting for you to turn around and see that he was there to comfort you in whatever trouble you could have been in. God is our comfort. God shows us through God's people that we are not alone. God is with us in every kind of trouble and every joyous moment. About two years ago, I came back to church and I was struggling. It was the beginning of 2021, and I was scared to come back to a place I hadn't been to in a while. I started by attending online church in January, and then I started coming back in person in some Sunday school in February, and then in March on spring break, I made the decision to come to youth. It was scary to come to a place I hadn't known in a while. I was welcomed with open arms back here. From every interaction I had, whether it be in Sunday school with the grade above me, youth mentors, or just people coming to talk to me during the service, I was welcomed. It was an awesome feeling to be welcomed back into a place I had not been to in a long time. It helped me find a home away from home. I could turn to the church and the people here to find an outlet when I was feeling down or upset. I found God's blanket of comfort from the people and interactions I had at this church. I've seen God work through the people of this church for the benefits of those around us. It sometimes felt surreal that the people were, were going to listen to what I had to say and were going to be there whether I told them what was going on or not. They were there. We all know that God knows us so well, and he knows every thought before we even say it. While as humans do not know everyone's thoughts and actions, the people that have surrounded me in my times of trouble did not even have to know something was going on to be there for me. A simple text from a person checking up on me made it, me feel heard even if I didn't speak of the matter that was going on. In verse 7, it says, Our hope for you is certain, because we know that as you are partners in suffering, so you are also partners in comfort. I'm so glad I have partners in comfort at this church through God. Amen. Hello, my name is Max, and I'm a sophomore at Liberty High School. Four years ago, almost to the day, our family was watching the Mavs play on a rainy Sunday. This was before I had choir and youth to go to on Sunday afternoons, of course. When all of a sudden, Dad paused the game and said, we have something to tell you. Mom sharply looked up and asked, right now? Dad nodded and, with the sensitivity of Georgia whooping TCU, told us, we're moving. We're moving. Of course, being a preacher's kid in the Methodist church, I'd always known this to be a possibility. It had happened before. Back in kindergarten, when my parents announced that we were moving from Henrietta to Sherman, I defiantly told them that I was not moving. Mom said, the bishop told you, but Dad, there's a church in Sherman who needs him. To which I responded, the bishop doesn't tell me where to live, but mom told me the bishop tells your dad where to live, and I'm going with him. So I knew moving was always a possibility, but it had been in the far future, not right now. I was just about to go into the youth group in Sherman. I was about to go into middle school band, where the band director was from our church, but now we're moving. So the weeks go on, we start making trips to the Frisco Plano area to look for houses. We visit this beautiful church. But the worst part? Telling all of our dear friends from church, 
from school, from our sports teams, that we won't be here next year. Now, as you can imagine, as a sixth grader, this news was pretty earth shattering. Will I be able to make new friends? When will it feel like home? What am I going to do? As we got nearer to our move time, I started making final goodbyes to all my friends. The last soccer game, the last day of school, the last day of VBS. But the last thing I would do officially with anybody from Sherman was Bridgeport. As some of you know, Bridgeport is a youth church summer camp that was, and still is, the place I feel closest to God. The entire week I had mixed feelings. On the one hand, I loved Bridgeport. On the other, this is the last time I will see all of my friends from Sherman. I'll come back to the story in a second. My entire life, I had the church as a second home of sorts. From being a summer landing spot to read Hank the Cowdog, to being the place I spent every Sunday and Wednesday. I had always known God to be there, but I was not sure if I'd ever felt him there. When I was moving, I definitely needed him. So now I'll be reading Psalm 23, verse 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for, you're, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. They comfort me. Not they protect me, not they guide me, but they comfort me. When walking through the darkest valley, which is also translated to the valley of the shadow of death, the writer of Psalm 23 did not think that we need protection or guidance. We just need God to comfort us. We will figure it out, we'll get through it, but we desperately need comfort in our darkest hour. Let's go back to Bridgeport. Don't get me wrong, moving here to Plano is not the same thing as the valley of the shadow of death. <laughs> but it seemed pretty insurmountable at my point in life. A thing that happens at all Bridgeport summer camps is morning worship. That's when all the camp trudges up the hill, before breakfast, I might add, to sit and look over the lake, to sing songs, and maybe have a little message. As I sat there on one of the last mornings of Bridgeport, my mind traveled back to the world, outside of this bliss I've been living in for the past week and having to leave the people I love. As I sat there in my own thoughts, I did not register the announcement of the next song, the song introduced to us by Mason at the Modern Worship Service in Sherman, the song that was the anthem for getting ready for church on Sunday mornings. The guitar started to strum, and subconsciously, I sang the opening words to one of my favorite songs. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery. And it started to dawn on me as I was looking over the peaceful waters of a new morning. Although I was leaving my friends, I could still visit. Although I was leaving the church I had called home and the people I had called family for six years, I was going right into the arms of a new one. My soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours and you are mine. I would not be going alone into the wilderness. I would have my biggest supporter with me. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me. You've never failed, and you won't start now. So I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves. No matter how hard it would be to meet new people and to start all over again, I was not doing it alone. God makes all things work for good, and he won't stop with me. Well, it turns out that moving to Plano was not the worst thing that could have happened to me. <laughs> I made lots of new friends, and this church is everything I could have asked for. Broadway Cafe last week is one of the most fun things I'd ever done. How many times do you get to hang out with all of your friends and sing and dance to some of the most iconic songs of all time? APA was a new endeavor for me that everyone should have the opportunity to experience. It is incredibly impactful to leave your home and what you know to go help people who really need it, all while growing closer to God. Mystery Trip was the first event I went to at this church on the first day we were here, which was a great bonding opportunity right away and helped me prepare for APA. And that's not to mention Choir Tour, which is funded by Broadway Cafe, where we get to travel around the U.S. and bring a little joy to people who are oftentimes forgotten. So, though we will walk through the darkest valleys and though the oceans will rise, 
we can all be comforted by the thought of God, who loves us more than we can fathom and who will always be there. Amen.